All right, here we go, episode five of our Descent Legends in the Dark series, where we're going to be uh, closing up almost with our main heroes. We're going to be painting Cyrus, the human prodigy. I haven't played this game yet, but the people I've talked to and people have comments, uh, they seem to like it. So I'm excited. I'm going to get to it sometime. Um, if this is your first time at the channel, if you're a returning person, or if you've watched these videos and yet not have subscribed, so hit that subscribe button. Come on, what do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. Six easy steps on how to paint this thing. Let's get it going. Let's do this, and let's have some fun. All right, let's go. First thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, scraping off some of these nasty mold lines. If you need anything or check out anything, check out the description below. I have a full paint list and everything that I use, along with the membership program. If you're a super fan, which is maybe like one of you, if any, after you scraped off all those nasty mold lines, hit that thing up with some black primer. I'm using an airbrush because you can control it a lot easier. And we're going to be using some white. This is going to be the zenithal highlighting. This is going to be the focal area of what we're going to be hitting, and it's going to give it a natural highlight. You won't be disappointed. So if you're using spray cans, you can do the same thing. Just do it. Step one is going to be doing our base, and there's only going to be a couple of colors we're using on this. And our stone tile looking area, we're going to be using some Basilicanum Gray, which is contrast paint from Citadel. Slap that all over. Just be a little careful because obviously we have some roots that are growing on the top of it. Next for our root area, we're going to be using some Plague Bearer Flesh. Again, another contrast paint. I like using a mixture of regular paints and contrast paints from Citadel. No, I'm not sponsored. I just started painting when I was a young child using Citadel paints, so I've used them forever. I'm addicted. It's like my drug. Bring up that green just a little bit. We're going to use some Nurgling Green on top of that Plague Bearer Flush just to give it a little, little nasty little look. Nothing too crazy, but that's all we're going to be doing for the base. This is probably the easiest one we've done so far. Next, we're going to be doing our Flame Colors in Step 3. Yeah, and we're going to be using two drops of medium per each well. The first color we're going to put in there is some Uriel Yellow. Mix it up nice and good. The second color we're going to be mixing into our well is our Fire Dragon Bright. And again, mix this in very well. And the last color we're going to put into our well is the Wild Rider Red. And the reason we're doing this is because this medium, this acrylic medium, is going to significantly slow the drying time down so we can kind of wet blend our colors together. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that Uriel Yellow out of our well. Use a large brush if you have this because this is a larger surface area. And we're going to slap that over almost all of this miniature. And it might take a little while, but as you can tell by doing the zenithal highlighting, you've already created a natural highlight of the little darkness yellow and the bright yellow on the white. So it just kind of takes the work out of it, and that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to be the best winning competitions. We're trying to get this mini on the table so we can play with it looking fantastic. While that thing is still wet, we're going to start hitting those flame areas up with some of that Fire Dragon Bright. Now you're going to notice that that yellow is probably still wet, and that's exactly what we want. We want those two colors to blend together and make it look more natural. Now with your doing flame, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can be as crazy as you want, you can be as subtle as you want, you can be as monotone and bleh as you want, because it's nothing flame has no consistent color it changes constantly so you want it to look like it's changing and that's what we're aiming for here and again i'm just going through certain areas and picking out some flames that i want to do some flames i won't want to do and just not going too crazy with it the only thing we try to avoid on this miniature is probably doing the head of the hawk or the eagle or whatever it is 
um, with this orange or red. We want to keep that white in the final step that we're coming up here pretty quick. Next, we're going to take some of that Wild Rider Red, and we're going to focus this on the tips of some flames, blending in with that orange and that yellow. And we're just going to pick out some that we want and just not go too crazy with it, but obviously we want to create that color variation from the yellow, orange to red on this portion of the miniature. And the neat thing about this is if we miss a spot or we forget about something, hey, just go back to your well, put some yellow on it, put some orange. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Don't sit here and you have to follow every little single brush stroke that I'm doing. You can do whatever you want. It's your miniature, it's your day. I'm just giving you some ideas on how to do it. For the head of that hawk, we're going to take some Dorn Yellow. If you don't have this, just take some of that Yurio Yellow and put some white in it, make it a dull looking yellow. And we're going to paint up that head just a little bit to make it that white, bright flame, the hottest point. And I'm taking some of that little Dorn Yellow and maybe just putting little spots here and there just to break it up just a tad bit. And for the little pendants around the little hawk or eagle's neck, we're going to take some Retributor armor to that. Hit it with some of that Reichlin flesh shade and let it dry. Then smack it on the raised areas with some Liberator Gold. Just brighten it up just a wee bit. And that's it for the flame area of our miniature. And on to Cyrus. We're going to start with the skin, and obviously we have our face and a little portion of neck that is sticking out when you're staring directly at our miniature. Don't make the mistake that I did and paint that glove that he's wearing with his raised right fist. You do not want to paint that with dry bark, and you'll see that I stopped and I started to do it. Don't do that. Um, hit the left hand, obviously, and then obviously the legs that are sticking out and the portions that are sticking out through the sandal of Cyrus. For the beard of Cyrus, we're going to be using some straight up Abaddon Black. That's pretty cut and dry. For the sash around Cyrus, we're going to be using some Iand and Yellow, another contrast paint. This is just going to save some time and it's going to give you the natural highlight from the Zenithal highlighting. If you don't have this color, you can use Everland Sunset, but if you have a couple extra coins laying around, buy these colors. They're fantastic. I thoroughly enjoy them because it saves time. For those little middle pieces around his neck, we're going to be using some Avalon Sunset. You could use Iand and Yellow if you want this. I just want a kind of different color. And you can tell, you really can't notice a big difference between the two, just very subtly. For the shirt of Cyrus that is including sticking out on his right arm, we're going to be using some Ivory.
for the glove and his sandals, we're going to be using some Steel Legion Drab. The sandals are going to take a little bit of time because there is some space between the skin and them. Just take your time. Don't go crazy with it. And uh, enjoy it. For the portion of the glove that is brown, we're going to be using some Rhinox Hide. For the sash and some edge highlighting around the hood of Cyrus, we're going to be taking some Mephiston Red and coloring those ends. Take your time around the hood. You don't want to go crazy with it. For the gold pieces on the sash, we're going to use some of that Retributor armor. And for the little buckle clasp on his right hand. Little button on the glove is going to be pink horror. I know I missed this the first couple times I looked at it. And for the little under sash holding up that little dagger or maybe a mini wand. I'm going to think it's a wand because he's into magic. Some Mornfang Brown. For our staff, we're going to use some Blade Brain Brown. I think I said it right. And... You're going to notice from the zenithal highlighting how it already has a nice coloration to it. And for our pants, I'm going to call them MC Hammer pants. I don't know exactly what they are. Some Carrick Stone. That's what all the base colors should look like right there. We're going to use two washes, the first one being Nolan Oil. We're going to put this on the white ivory area very carefully. Don't overdo it. Next, we're going to use some Agrax Urshay. We're going to put this on everywhere besides the yellow sash that he has on that we use the contrast paint for. Everything else you can use this on. Thank you. 
Coming up to step six, which is our final step, we're gonna take our dryad bark and just highlight up our skin just a little bit, focusing on the raised areas, the bridge of the nose, the forehead, the cheekbones, the fingers, including the tips and the top portion of our arm. We also want to do our legs, toesies that are sticking out and the little portions in between, and in between, there we go, our sandal. Next, we're going to take a 50-50 mix of Nightquester Flesh and Dryad Bark, and we're going to do the same thing we just did, building up our highlights for the dark skin of Cyrus. And we are focusing on the raised areas as if the sun were hitting directly from above, making you that nice, colorized version of our miniature. And finally, we're going to take some pure Nightquester flesh, and we're going to hit the same areas, bridge of the nose, forehead, cheekbones, the fingers, the top portion of the skin, the toes, don't forget those little toesies, and a little bit between our sandal area. For inside of the mouth, we're going to hit that with some Volupus Pink, because he's got a nice pink tongue. And I couldn't get the right angle while filming, so I'm just going to show you the eyes with white and the teeth with white. Take your time with this, get a nice base while you're doing this, and take your time. For the eyes, we're just doing a tiny little dab of Abaddon Black. Don't make it too big. His eyes are very small in the picture. You do not want to go overboard with this. We're going to go back to the Everland Sunset well, and we are, this is a very optional thing, but I'm just going to highlight up a little bit of the area of the Iandin yellow we used on his sash. Just a tiny bit. Nothing crazy here. Um, just little certain areas. Make sure it's thinned very well. We don't want to go crazy on this. We're going to take some of that ivory again and we're going to re-highlight up the raised areas of our shirt for um, Cyrus and just go nothing too crazy but make sure we just get that back up to the white that you can see on the picture art. For the glove, I'm just taking a little bit of that Steel Legion Drive again, and I'm going to highlight up those raised fingers just to give it a little nice um, color contrast. For the gold area on the belt, we're going to be using some Liberator Gold to make this stand out just a little bit more. And for that little brown sash, we're going to use some Death Claw Brown just to highlight it up. Take some Tolerant Sand and highlight up those sandals. Matching the card art pretty well. Even though you, excuse me, even though you can't see it on the card, you got to bring up a picture off the internets to find it. It matches it pretty well and it looks very nice. As we're coming down the home stretch of this video, we're going to take some of our original Carrick Stone and just highlight up the raised areas of our MC Hammer pants. And just don't go into the recesses, don't go into the cracks, do it very sparingly and just make it, build it up nice to make it look like it's got some depth of it.
And with the second to last step approaching, Bane Blade Brown, a little dry brush just to bring that uh, staff up a little bit. It's casting spells and killing goblins and orcs and everything else. God, I love it. Just love it. And finally, your favorite part of this miniature, the finish line, painting the base, which I am doing in Abaddon, black. And that's it. You did it. You did a fantastic job. You guys are awesome. I want to see them. Send me pictures on Instagram. I want to see how you painted them. I'm sure they look fantastic. Uh, thank you for watching. Can't thank everyone enough for their support, subscribing, you know, if you're purchasing stuff from my links, helping support the channel, I can't thank you enough. You guys are awesome. You guys are too good to me. Thank you so much. So um, until next time, which we'll be doing another Descent episode, which should be next week, uh, paint on.